Okay, so I wanted to talk about this game, Primal the Awakening. Now, there's been a lot of videos out at the moment because people have got their copies playing through. Um, and this is a boss battler, very similar to Monster Hunter World in terms of uh, idea, story, scope, uh, but has its own take on it as well. I've now played, the, we've been playing this as part of a campaign. Uh, I've just gone through the prologue and the first two chapters. Uh, so please bear that in mind as I talk about my thoughts of this game. But I had to get a video out here because, man, do I like this game. I really love this game. It has so many things going for it that, that are just down up my street. Number one, it's an extremely large box. Um, <clears throat> but they've managed to keep everything into one box, which I do appreciate, rather than multiple boxes. Um, it will fit in a calyx, probably. I don't know, probably not, actually. No, I don't think it will fit in a calyx. Um, so that, that is a bit of an issue. But beautiful art on the box. And then that kind of goes and gets replicated throughout. So what you experience is the first thing, and you just notice I've started painting up some of them, is you get a tray full of miniatures as your first view into the box. Now these miniatures are really cool, uh, good scale, um, great detail and very unique. Um, so you've got your Vraxxon here, which is kind of like your, your fire uh, one, and you've got your stone kind of um, monster there. Tormat, as it's called. Cool. You've got your characters, and you only have four characters in the base game, so you might look at that and go, and I haven't quite finished painting these yet, uh, but you might go, what, you only get four characters? Um, but I'll show you in a second why that's not a bad thing at all. In fact, I really appreciate the, the lack of having to choose between characters. Um, so you've got your archer there. Oh, my favourite. You've got your double-handed sword guy there. You've got your paladin sword and shield guy there. And a big hammer dude here as well. So the miniatures are gorgeous and very different. So, for example, um, this is probably going to be our next hunt, is this beetle thing. Um, and the detail in the miniatures are really, really nice. You've also got this, which is another rock elemental. So, so they do have elements, different areas they go through. And these two, I believe, follow the same kind of thing. Then you've got water ones. So this one here has got these like whale flippers. Such cool design and beautiful miniatures. Uh, then you've got a kind of Godzilla type thing. Now this crystal, I'll show you, that was the last monster that we fought was one of those. There's another, another four miniatures, by the way, inside the box. And to get all of those monsters is awesome. Got this one, look at this thing. Very cool. Really cool design. You've got to be really careful. All these spikes are extremely sharp. <laughs> so that's one thing you got to notice. I mean, it's impressive how they've done it. But the scale, it really does feel as though you're fighting these, these um, big ones. I'll show this one again. Again, I haven't quite finished painting these ones yet. Uh, I need to do the eyes on this. But then... He's good as done. I'm not doing it a met, like um, super detailed job. I just wanted to get them out so we can play with them, really. Bats-like creature. So cool. I mean, look at this. You can tell it's a bat-themed nature, but look all the detail on it. And even though they're big miniatures, contrast paints work really well because of all the detail. Um, and then, of course... You've got your Alpha, or the Awakened, as they call it, which is huge. I think it's, um, judging by the design, I'm going to guess it's a, it's a mix of elements. So fire, stone, crystal, um, water, maybe, lightning, all of above. I don't know, I, I might be wrong. I'm just guessing there. Yeah, there's a game there. What does it look like? 
There we go. So that's your first tray. Uh, you got your characters, uh, your heroes, and then you've got uh, your hunters, if you like. And then you've got uh, a myriad of monsters. The plastic, my only gripe is slightly is this plastic. I don't know how long that's going to last. I don't think huge amounts of time, but we'll have to wait and see as we get there. So let's get these open. So this is the other four miniatures in the game. Let's put that to the side. So you get, and again, very different. You get this kind of like lizard, feathered. I think these are feathers, possibly. Very cool. This has got to be one of my favourites. Again, another one which I'll probably be fighting soon. But look at that. This is such, this might be my favourite. And just look at the scale of this thing. So cool. Okay, careful of the spikes. But you see here he's an armoured armoured crab. Lobster type thing. Very cool, with all the barnacles and detail on there. Love that one. Uh, then going to the one we just fought. Pharynx or something like that, which is like nine tails. Uh, crystal, so this has got like, in the art, I'll show you some of the art in a second. Uh, in the art, this is all crystals, which is really cool. Uh, but he's the alpha wolf. And then you got another type. I mean, this is really quite cool. Look at Look at this. Just really nice detail and pose. Really like the miniatures in this. Okay, so uh, what about the rest of it? So you get the campaign board. So you've got different areas which relate to different elementals of uh, creatures. And you're putting out these little quest cards that, you, that are basically ones you can go and try and hunt. So you can do it in lots of different orders, which are really... Uh, that's one of the positives I love about this game, is the fact that you can literally kind of like branch off and do different things. That All that does is improve replayability of the game, which is always a good thing. Um, 11 chapters in a campaign. And when you consider I've done a prologue in two sessions already in... Uh, and two chapters, sorry, in two sessions is really good. Then you get the, the monster battle board. So, effectively, the monster goes on like so. And then we'll turn around. You can see you've got your quadrant here, the front-facing quadrant here. Um, and then they would face those different quadrants. Turn around, you'd have different um, characters, which will go in. And it's very simple in terms of uh, a, a tactical layout of the board okay and you would have thought and at first thought which was one of my thoughts to be honest was well how is that going to be rich enough in terms of tactical um play but then i found out all the rest of it and yes it is it has got a reverse side as well that you can use kind of like slightly different but it's exactly the same except for you've got these uh i don't i, I haven't been instructed to use this yet so i don't know this might be the final showdown i don't know uh, then you've got uh, the round tracker on the side. Simple board. Then you've got character sheets, um, which you'll be familiar with with a lot of games. Uh, so you put your weapon card here. You can have two bits of armour, helm and your, um, your body, your armour. And those two basically denote your health total. Then you've got space for an item and three potions. You've got a nice bit of... Information and full scale art on the back, really appreciate. And made from a kind of plasticky stock, so I think these will be very durable. These seem like they'll be very durable, which which I really appreciate as well. Because last actually better than cardboard because it's got some flexibility. It's not going to bend unless you're really really not going to uh, deal with it very well. So as I mentioned, this was the last one we played, the Felix here. Um, and on the back, you can see the full page art. You've got these crystals, which could be a bit of a pain to paint. I'm thinking, uh, obviously, a gloss varnish, lots of colour. That could be quite cool. Let's flip it around and we can kind of see what we've got. Uh, this is the, uh, oh, sorry. So that's the Felix here. You've got Tora Map, which is the stone one. Uh, up here, you've got health. Then it might have, you'll notice here, 
I'll just show the differences between the two. You've got a separate track. So they, they're all very asymmetric and they all play very, very differently. Um, <clears throat> uh, they all have, I think they've all got the same health. Uh, they have what, what kind of um, element they are and then their weaknesses. They've got a weakness to these things here. So if you've got a weapon, which is one of those, you basically, how weakness works, is you can change up your deck. And I'll talk about that in a bit. Really cool mechanic. Uh, then you've got the Raxon. And again, you've got your three slots for your reactions, your three sl slots down here for the uh, the actual, their stance and what they're going to be doing. Then you've got the Beetle <laughs> with Lightning Poison. Very cool. The Azu. Again, you can see here it's got lightning and the weaknesses to that. You've got the Karaja, which is another fire elemental. You see here. Got quite a lot of weaknesses, this one. So that'd be interesting. Gorgeous art. You've got the Digorax. And again, this is basically like a shield. So it looks as though the stone versions of stuff the thing that looked like a bat is a stone version yeah you see its horns there um so therefore it'll it'll can become hardened makes it really hard you can't stun it uh it makes it a lot harder to attack and everything else there's the crab one which is c tamatoa uh, which is a coral one the other sea creature which had the fit you know the paddle fins uh, is the Oroxen. Then you've got another crystal one, which is the Morkaras. Did I show you that one? Yeah, I think I did. It's like a T-Rex. That one there. So yeah, it'd be quite cool to try these. Uh, then you've got another lightning one, which got a different one. I don't even know what that is. Uh, but you'll have to see what that is. Oh, look at that. I reckon that's the weak spot. And that's the Jekaros Hurum, which is just another one. Not many weaknesses for the Hurum. And the Taragura, which is another one of those type, which I presume is stone. So we had bone, now we've got stone. Um, or horn and then the stone. Uh, looks pretty formidable, that one. And then you've got the Awakened, which actually is on two. Two, I think it goes like this. If I remember what it said rightly. Or like this, or something like that. Uh, in which case, you've got two different... Um, just trying to think. Yeah, I think it goes like that. Uh, and then you've got two tracks. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's why it doesn't make sense. You got two tracks like this. Okay, so this is the big boss that you'll fight at the end. So they're the uh, monster mats and character mats. Then you get quite a daunting rule book. That's 120 pages. Uh, don't worry too much because if you have a little look, you've got a little bit about it and it's got the prologue. So you actually, it takes you through how to play the, the prologue and all the different phases, which is actually, I actually really appreciate this. This is, this actually worked really well. And then when you get to finish the prologue, it says end of prologue. And then you go, right, this is the campaign. This is what you need to do. These are what you need. Uh, the concepts of the campaign. So it breaks it up into those campaigns. And then if you want to, you don't have to play. One of the things I love about this game is the next page. This. You could do Expedition, which basically is one shot. You can choose which level you want to play at. So you don't have to just go in at like level one. Um, and then each character, each um, monster you want to hunt, you just choose whichever monster you want to hunt. You've got uh, two different expeditions you can go for, for each monster. And it tells you all the special rules and the setup. And more importantly, this is really cool. You have deck lists. So for Darian, who's got the great sword, you can go at starter deck or level zero, level one, level two, or level three. And it tells you exactly what you need to put in your decks, uh, what equipment you would have to make it so it's balanced for that. And it's got for each of the four characters. This is so cool. It means that... Um, 
you could, you know, you don't have to do a campaign. You can literally just do one shots, but still get that real nice feel. Once you know how to play the game, obviously you would always, new players, you would always play with the starter deck because it really helps to understand number one, what the character does, and number two, how to play the game. But as soon as you've done that, go onto one of these because I'll tell you what, <laughs> go through that first upgrade stage and get a new weapon. Oh, it's so cool. Um, but I wanted to show you, and there's legendary equipment and everything. Here we go. I'll just use this one as an example. So this is the exact example I wanted to show. So the way that the weapon works, I really like what they've done with the items. So the weapon that you make, so you can forge it, or as if you do an expedition, you can just basically grab it. And then you'll see here, there are four types of cards. So the best way I can show this is I'm going to bring out, uh, let's bring out these cards. So these are Darians. Oops. So there are different colored cards. So you've got yellow, green, red, and blue. And blue, okay. Um, so two are defense. So green and yellow are defense. And then red and blue are attack, okay. Uh, they do different sort of colors, but how you deck build. So when you're going through the campaign, you'll have your weapon will have a certain number that you have to include in your deck. This is so cool as a mechanic and they've made it, I mean, the amount of work that must have gone in to balance this and to just think about the asymmetric nature of um, how this was gonna work. So if I just bring out Darien's again, and then we can talk about, here we go. So Darien's, for example, let's say you got a level two flame tone. So you, you'd have, you see how it's more attacking because it's six, four, five, five. If we go to, something different like a dragon claw which is more of a bone type elemental it's five 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 so it's a balanced deck and um, when you play and then it has a special ability so the flame tongue is basically just damage yourself do as much damage as you possibly can start you may suffer two damage if you do flame tongue gets plus four damage until the end of the turn pretty nuts okay you have to damage yourself and you only have a certain amount of health um sunder five six four five so this suddenly increases the blue and um, blue's how you manage the monster uh, and try and do it and then you've got again similar th thing with uh the bows and you see that you've got different numbers of those as well uh it your starter you will start six 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 and then as you specialized it'll tend to be uh, an average of 20 i believe it's 20 cards yeah it might be exclusively 20 cards now looking at it Yep. So then you go to a 20 card deck. Okay. So you hone your deck and you decide how you do it. If you have the, remember when I showed you, if you've got, for example, you're going against the Torah map who has, and you have one of these elements. So let's say you've got the water element. Then the way that that works, it doesn't double damage or anything like that. What it does is allows you to choose another card to, to swap out. So you could, if you've got like a weapon, let's say you've got that flame tongue, right? Which has got six red cards, but you want to put a seventh red card in, then you can do that if you have the advantage in terms of the elemental advantage. Um, really, really nice, not too um, complex in terms of deck building uh, mechanic that they've got there, but I really, really appreciate this. Uh, you're going to have an armor and a helm, like I said before. These will determine your total health. So for example, on on armor, you've got down the bottom right what the health of that will give you. And then it's got a really nice mechanic where let's say you're taken down to zero um, health. You're not out of the out of the battle. What you do is you get kind of like knocked down and then you have to deplete one of your items. So your health suddenly goes down and you lose the ability of one of your items. Uh, and you have to wait a couple of turns uh, to start again. You've only got 10 rounds to defeat the monster. Um, this is so cool. You also have a mastery card as well, which you're trying to trigger throughout the campaign. Works so, so well. So at first glance, this looks pretty daunting as a rule book, but once you get into it, it's not too bad. Then you have your campaign book. There's loads of lore in this, and it does state uh, that you should read it all to get the most experience out of it. Um, I think, am I right in saying... Uh, could be wrong. 
I mean, you could skip it, I suppose. Uh, so you've got all the quests. So all the quest scenarios there. Um, so there are 20... 30. 30 different quests you can do throughout the 11 chapters of the of the campaign. Uh, then at the back, you've got some little um, uh, rewards, really. Uh, things that happen. Uh, by the way, another thing really, really, really appreciate is an index. Alphabetical index, absolutely essential when you, especially when you've got something this big. You've also got, which always helps, uh, a round structure card. Both, same both sides, but this is really useful to know to, to remind yourself about the round structure, and then even better, because like I said, you've got only got four characters, but when you consider these, this deck that's that's um Darian's. Uh, upgrade cards so you're going to be upgrading your cards as well but this is a little cheat sheet tells you what their abilities are on their cards but also any keywords that their cards use really really cool really appreciate those cheat sheets so you got your campaign book as well then you've got during the campaign you can build very similar to kingdom death monster extremely similar to kingdom death monster uh it's less random in terms of the elements that you get from um defeating one of these monsters uh when you defeat a monster you basically go to the reward section it tells you exactly what you gain um i think there is a, sometimes there's a choice um but it's not random like kingdom death monster uh you've got three different levels of forge and herbalists and these are the things which you're going to use to manufacture. You're, if you know Kingdom Death Monster, you know exactly what this is about. You've got your element that you need to use to fuse uh, and the materials that you need. And then you can go and grab that card from the thing. So you've got your diff four different weapons for the four different characters. You've got uh, bits of armor set and a couple of items. Um, I mean, I love this about Kingdom Death Monster and it goes ahead here as well. I would say potentially this is... Again, everything's just much more streamlined because you've basically got one character, so you can only grab that. If you're Darian and you've only got the long sword, you can only grab that one. You can't obviously grab any of those three. Um, you can grab these, of course you can, but you can only grab the one weapon. It makes it so it's it's a much more simpler, streamlined version of um, upgrading. I personally love that. If you're into someone who really wants to richly make your character unique and change it around, then that this game doesn't do that to the same extent so uh you've got your your tr your um campaign sheet where you'll be talking about what trophies you've got uh what quests you've covered where chapter you're in and it scales it okay so after the prologue you go straight into number one then uh you get to level two and then three and it talks about uh th these are the character sheets uh you'll have materials plants and elements and you'll be gaining these, and then that's what you can produce from. You choose a skill tree to go down. So I've gone down the E route. Um, so I've got both the E1 cards to choose from if I want to make my deck. And then I can upgrade into E2 when I've been told. So a really streamlined upgrade system. Really appreciate it. Then you've got your myriad of tokens. I don't have uh, the terrain pack for this one. Uh, you've got all your weapons. Your, sorry, all your weapons in here. All your items in here and potions and armor and then you've got your different characters it comes with all these um uh, dividers and then you've got all of the characters uh, sorry all the en enemies from there and as i said you're going to have the deck you're going to create your deck before you go in uh it's a really nice card mechanic where and it, this has been talked about a lot where you've got to make those hard decisions do you want to use it for its um resources or stamina as it's called in this game to pay for the cost uh to play it out on your board or do you or do you want it for its use there are loads of synergy by the way and combos that go on this in this game uh you can also assist people so there's assists so you basically instead of using it for the cost the, the actual card or the resources when it's not your turn on another person's turn you just basically discard this as an assist and then that triggers uh, something else but the beauty is you're discarding cards and so much triggers go off discards it really cool mechanics going on in this game uh that's wound cards so if you get knocked down you get your wounds in your deck um yeah and that's the idea of the cards you're going to have a certain number of cards in your hand typically five um that you're going to be starting with but there are different ways to draw more cards 
it's all in the card play. It is very much a card driven game. Okay, no dice, as it were. Now the enemies, if let's grab the Torah map, for example. If I can grab those without wrecking them. There we go. So if we have a look at the Torah map, they have stances. And depending on what level it's at, we'll determine, you see here is level one. Uh, level one and level zero. So not that one. Two, two, two. I seem to have, did I leave one behind? Okay, we seem to have uh, misplaced one of them. Ah, actually, is it because that one, there we go. So, so what you've got is you've got stance one, two, and three. They'll typically go through stance one, two, and three as you start to damage it more. So remember it has 10 wounds. Now the beauty of this is to, to cause a wound, you have to do this much damage per person. So if you, for example, we're playing three player. So a Torah mat is actually quite, as you would expect, quite sturdy. So you need 12 hits to 12 hits to cause a wound. Then as soon as it goes from 10 to seven, it basically changes its stance and its behavior. And it goes up to stance two, it has a revealed effect, becomes harder to hit, and it might change how you hit it. So in other words, when you get to stance three, you can only attack it from its flanks. You can never attack it from its head for obvious reasons. Um, then if you, as you change levels up, so you've got level two there and level three there, uh, it gets harder and harder. You've got a peril card, which will trigger different things. And then you'll have a, a, a what do you call it? I guess it's like a permanent kind of um, thing that can happen. OK, so this is where you, basically it gets some rage and it charges. Then you've got its behavior cards. So a classic kind of reaction thing, except for it uses slightly different. So it has reaction ability. So remember on a on the Tormax card, you're going to have three of these out at any one time. And then whenever these trigger, so things like end of round, uh, if another another triggers happened, if you start your turn in facing the front of the, uh, the character, if the um, if the monster turns, uh, that's if the monster turns. I can't remember what that is. Something. Oh, if you're on the flank, maybe. Uh, if you played a red card during the attrition phase. So there's all these triggers that happen. And you, the one thing you've got to remember for this game is that you've got to remember to do those triggers. So you've always got to keep in mind whenever you do an action. So whenever you play a card, have you triggered something? Um, because or else that's you're, you're missing out on the enemy's activation because that's how the enemy activates okay if you have a look on here the only monster kind of phase is the upkeep phase where you basically recycle out one of its refresh cards and then it gains struggle and it uses those struggles to do extra attacks or, or, or boost up its um reaction attacks or if you let it go totally out of hand It'll do like a, a enraged attack or something like that. It's called, uh, which is when they basically just damage to everyone. So you got to keep an eye on the struggle and how you do that. Red cards do attack, linked to. So you remember you got the four different types of of attack. So red deals damage equal to your um, weapons damage plus anything else. Uh, blue takes away struggle. Uh, and then green and yellow. So green, if I remember rightly, green is um, protection. Yellow is movement. But they're both defense tokens. And, and at the end of your turn, so when you have your turn, you've got to move first. Decide if you're going to move or not. If you don't move, you choose not to move. You become threatened, which means that you basically have to draw two attrition cards, which means you're more likely to take damage at the end of your turn. Then you do your actions. You play as many cards as you can afford them. Uh, or do a revive action and then you have an attrition phase and this is where you can take damage and the damage is equal to whatever's on the um the uh behavior card the stance card sorry so again if i bring this up this is the amount of damage that every time that the uh enemy attacks and during attrition then you have an end of phase so you notice there's no monster activation so the monster activates through reactions that's how it works i really love this mechanic because you can see what the reactions are out and you can kind of plan it a little bit ahead. And I get the feel of more like that kind of computer game where you, you set things up and you choose your moment to strike. And you can definitely do this in this game. It really feels like this, especially when you play with multiple players. When you play with multiple players, you're kind of deciding, right, how are we going to how are we gonna tackle this? How are we going to attack? Really, really love how, they, how they've done so many mechanics in this game from... 
the deck build i guess it's construction rather than build the deck construction uh before you 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 do that before you, when you know what you're hunting before you go into the hunt and the fight then you've got the enemy ai and activations you've got a relatively quick game it's not it doesn't take super long to play a uh, hunt which is really nice especially when you consider you've done a um you've done a kind of like upgrade stage or part to it as well at that point uh which is really cool so yeah it's, it's relatively quick play as well uh and especially if you do the one shot uh, especially if you've uh, before you do the one shot let's say you're doing with a group of friends or whatever it might be set up the decks beforehand so you're basically ready to play and you can get that done in probably an hour and a half i reckon uh good storage solution uh the plastic is a little bit flimsy um i mean if i compare this to kingdom death i mean kingdom death is such a great storage solution but this is good it gives you um uh, dividers and everything else. You definitely won't have space if you want to sleeve it. I've started sleeving some of the character ones and one of the uh, Varaxons, I think. And it's, mm, it's not, yeah, it, it's not a lot of space. So that, that could be an issue and you'll have to find a different storage solution. But the miniatures are amazing. Like this, for example, is tight fit and you know it, fit, it all fits in a box which is great um but it's a bit trying to get this in for example you just gotta be a little bit careful because it's quite thin plastic and the last thing you want to do is break that so that is the core box of primal the awakening it is a beast but because you back it on game found or kickstarter then what came along with it was a nightmare expansion so let's say you become a bit more of a seasoned pro at primal you can with this cam with this uh, expansion this nightmare expansion it's got cards for all of the monsters so all the monsters you've got nightmare mode it brings about a more of a reaction uh you can just plug and play these into the campaign and then you get Four more monsters, three more models. Uh, here's the campaign book, so if you wanted to add that to your campaign. You've got the Tarasca, Fire Elemental, which is the Tarasku. You've got the Zekath and the Zekalith, which are the male and female version. And it's got this weird mechanic, I don't even know what that is. Some mind control, maybe. Which is really cool. You have to decide which one you're going to paint out. And then the Zithros, which is a feathered... Now, now please be aware this game also I, i've just literally got the base game um but it came with loads of expansions as well so it's, now you gotta be really careful these are extremely sharp but there's the task really cool task you you got the feathered okay these things could be lethal if you pick them up, that's basically T Rex feathered T Rex. And then you got that. It's so cool. It's like a mind flayer. That's very cool. Old school. We've got entire sculpt bases as well. And then as I said, you get all the cards for this. Legendary items. The whole lot so these are like the nightmare cards and their standard cards as well obviously if you want to just plug them into the game you can do that as well so there you go that's primal the awakening with a little bit of a, an expansion i again i've only played um up to chapter two in the uh, campaign i played one one shot uh, so still quite early days, but absolutely love this game. I think there's so many things going for it. Um, and it really does feel like Monster Hunter World. I know it's not the IP of it. Um, and I know that Monster Hunter World also came out at roughly the same time. Uh, 
But the card play in this, I love. I actually really do appreciate the fact it's not dice play. Um, yes, there's luck drawing the right cards. Of course there is, um, with any card game. Um, but because it's only a 20 card deck, that's not a big disadvantage it's, it's less likely to happen you're always going to have options to use even if you just use your assists and help your uh, party members your other party members to attack uh, the monsters the monsters feel different they certainly i've played the four now against four different ones and they do feel different uh, they feel um three different ones sorry i played against three different ones now um and they all feel very very different uh so so the wolf one kind of like uh, is all about reacting um, and all their peril cards and everything else is, is about reactions. You just trigger all the reactions at start of turn, things like that. Um, so they're, the monster's having lots of goes, but it's a little bit, it's a bit more squishy compared to the Toromat. The Toromat is pretty slow go, but it's, re, re, it's got a lot of armor. But what we did is, because we played the prologue, we figured out what the, well, we thought we figured out how the characters played. And the Dorian, Darian, the um, the big sword guy, and then uh, Miria, who's the bowman. Them two basically were doing all the damage, and then we had the sword and shield guy, Lionel, or whatever he's called, uh, to basically be the buff who just took all the damage, took all the aggro, allowing us to wail on the Toromat. And uh, we we did very well against the Toromat. It was uh, it was a pretty easy easy encounter to be completely honest we had upgraded weapons it's crazy how much better the upgraded weapons become um it's so cool it's so so cool we love the prologue but as soon as we played that that first uh, proper hunt in chapter one against the toromat it was it was awesome um how much different the game kind of felt and how much more our characters felt unique and that's the kind of major thing so far, I've found with this game is how unique everything feels. Um, I was playing Mira, who's the the archer. She was very different to uh, the sword and shield, and to the um, and to the uh, Darian, the 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 big sword, the great sword guy. Um, they play very very different, which is really cool. I love that. Um, the the monsters you're playing against again uh, feel very different. And it's the same game mechanics in essence, but. There's little tweaks to it. And having those cards, the peril cards, what they do in the reaction cards, of course, because you just turn them over and you do what it says. That's very thematic as well. So the Vraxen, who you fight against in the prologue, all about just spitting fire everywhere. And this fire is so annoying. It doesn't do damage to you, but you can't play cards. So you suddenly your, your turn's pointless unless you can move out of there. And that, that, that forces you to have to move. Uh, so you have to think about your... Ta so in terms of tactics... Even though you've got that literally four quadrants and a monster in the middle, so it seems really, really simple to start with, what you've got in your hand and how are you going to attack it and the order you're going to do that takes a lot of tactical thought. Uh, and that is beautiful because you're talking around the table all the time. I love it when these games are proper cooperative. I should have probably mentioned that at first. This is a co-op game, not a competitive game, but it really is a really strong co-op game where you are literally talking around. Now, I have played it solo, the prologue. I gave the prologue go solo. I really enjoyed it. But compared to playing with other people, no. This this shines. This absolutely shines playing in a group. Absolutely shines playing in a group. Uh, but again, is you know, the story there is a story behind it. There is a whole law. You're trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, I don't know what's going on at the moment, um, because I'm quite early in. We're getting some some hints and some ideas about uh what's happening with the world we're in. Um, but you could swap out people uh, during your play sessions. It won't be a massive thing as long as they know how to play the game. I mean, just start if, if someone new to the game and they had an upgraded deck and fighting against a more complex monster. That could be a bit of a, a bit a steep learning curve. So I think if you've got a group of people that you've perhaps played some one shots, uh, played the prologue with, there's no reason why you can't swap those out. Um, but it's not a huge campaign. It's not going to take you years uh, like other games. Um, you could basically get this done probably in about six, six or seven play sessions. I, I, I would assume. I would assume judging by how far it's gone so far, which is pretty good. So, 
couldn't recommend this highly enough. I mean, I don't know if it's coming retail or I would guess not, but I'd very, very be surprised if there wasn't a, a second um, printing of Primal the Awakening. It's, I think it's got mu re very high reviews across the board and I can definitely see why. I personally really love this game. Yet another new game, which is uh, right up there as some of my favourites. There's so many, so many. It's, it's a great time to be board gaming because there are so many good games that are coming out all the time. Um, and this is definitely none exception. So that's my little thoughts on Primal The Awakening. I guess you can call it a review of sorts, but as I say, I've not played through a campaign yet, so I can't give you a detailed review. Um, but I love this game and I highly recommend it. If you get a chance to play it, find someone who's got the game and give it a go. Uh, you won't regret it. It's a fantastic game. Until next time, keep gaming.